Now, uh, let's do a quick recap from uh, what we did yesterday, okay? Uh, we did the function notation yesterday. Uh, again, let me just remind you that uh, function notation is very simple and do not give special treatment. You know how to do f of minus two. You just replace the x with a minus two. And a lot of people, you have to understand, you have to ask yourself. Okay, so um, again, you do not give special treatment to anything, anything, all right? So if you know how to do f of minus two, then you should know how to do f of x minus two. You do not give special treatment. You just replace the original x with whatever that's placed inside of parentheses right here. I know there's an x right here that might interfere your thought process, but you do not give any kind of special treatment. And here, part C, it will be on the quiz. It will be on a test. I'm just going to let you know. And do not find this hard because again, this is the same as F of negative two. You just replace it with whatever that was printed inside of parentheses. Okay. And if it, if it requires for a FOIL, you do the FOIL. And please, now last year, at the beginning of school year, a lot of students, a lot of students would make this mistake that we talked about yesterday about the uh, X plus two or X minus two square. Okay, so ask yourself, are you susceptible to this part? And if you, are, if you think that you might make a mistake here, then ask yourself, what is the thought processing in your brain and how do you fix it so that you would not make the same mistake again, okay? Uh, we talked about domain. Again, domain is about all the possible X values and uh, linear function. It's always uh, all real numbers. And we learned how to use interval notations to express our intervals. Uh, so here we have from, from negative infinity to infinity. And we use parentheses here because we are not including, we are not including, um, uh, we are not including uh, parentheses. And then we have other functions. Now, when you see other functions, how do you find domains of other functions? It's a very important question to ask, which is, hey, could X be anything? Could X be anything? And we look at square root of X, we say, wait, hold on. X can't really be anything because X cannot be negative numbers. What happens when X becomes negative underneath the square root? What's the outcome? Imaginary, and we wanna keep things real. So we say, yeah, you know, this X thing, it better be something bigger than zero. And then we look at the denominator. We say, oh yeah, denominator is great, except that we just don't want it to be zero because if the denominator becomes zero, what's gonna happen? Undefined, right? So, uh, so we do not have, we do not want to have a uh, fraction that's undefined. So that means our job is to make sure that X will not be a number that will make the denominator zero. Now, I wanna make sure that you are listening to this difference. It is not that we don't want X to be zero. We do not want the denominator to be zero. Okay, so that's the thought process behind. And that's, why, that's how we say, oh yeah, What's the domain? Everything greater than everything greater than zero except five, and that's how we express it. So far, so good. Okay. So uh, yesterday we were here looking at the graphs. So uh, make sure you know what increasing means. Make sure you know what decreasing means. Okay. So increasing means positive slope. Decreasing means negative slope. And you're gonna hear these two these two terms very often next year in calculus okay so yesterday i left you with this question can you draw x square and x cubed function okay now let me just say this okay uh, a lot of people uh, they kind of sell themselves short they just surrender they think that oh i cannot do this now but ask yourself 
Can you actually carry out a number that's being squared? Can you? Okay. Can you actually keep a number? If you can square and keep a number, that means you can graph because you can just come up with some numbers. Be like, oh, what is a uh, negative two whole thing squared? Be like, oh, it's about four. And then negative one squared, one. Zero squared, zero. One squared, one. Two squared, two. So then you can draw a parabola just like this. I want you to know one thing that's very simple, and that is a graph is a representation of all the points. A graph is the representation of all the points in the function. And if you know the points, then you have a graph. Okay. And the same thing with a uh, cube. What's what is negative two cubed? Negative eight. So if I have negative two, so uh, negative eight somewhere right there. Now we're just sketching, by the way. We're not going to ask for superb uh, accuracy. And negative one cube will be negative one, zero cube, zero. One cube, it's one, two cube, it's eight. So it should be something like this or something that looks like this, okay? If you produce a graph that looks somewhat like this, then you're good, okay? Now, so I hope you can connect some dots here. <laughs> Why am I asking you to draw these two functions? And why am I asking you drawing these two functions in the context of even and odd functions? Okay. Now, I use this as an entry point because uh, even an odd function, uh, these two are terms. This is the entry point of even and odd function. And now you can see like, uh, what's even function? Now, at least that's one thing I want you to see is even function, okay? You can see this is an even number. Odd function, you can see this is an odd number. So this is a look that helps you think about what is even function. Even function, if I have to say, uh, hmm, do you think that this looks like a reflection? If you say, yeah, it looks like a reflection, then I would ask you, what is it reflected over with? It is reflected over. Okay. Okay. So if you know how to draw an x squared graph, then you know what even function is, then you know where the symmetry is, okay? If you know how to draw an x cubed graph, then wait, hold on, is it a reflection? 